Gets to, gets, to your, uh, gets to your question. The question in the hall on foreign aid. Yes, ma'am. The American people are suffering in our country right now. Why do we continue to send foreign aid to other countries when we need all the help we can get for ourselves? Governor Perry, what, what about that? I mean... Yeah. Absolutely. I think it's time for this country to have a very real debate about foreign aid. Uh, clearly, uh, there are places. As a matter of fact, I think it's time for us to have a very serious discussion about defunding the United Nations. When you think about, when you think about the Palestinian Authority circumventing those Oslo Accords and going to New York to try to create the conflict and to have themselves approved as a state without going through the proper channels is a travesty. And I think it's time not only to have that entire debate about all of our foreign aid, but in particular, the UN. Why are we funding that organization? Governor Romney, should foreign aid be eliminated? Foreign aid has several elements. Uh, one of those elements is defense is to make sure that we are able to have the defense resources we want in certain places of the world. That probably ought to fall under the Department of Defense budget rather than a foreign aid budget. Part of it is humanitarian aid around the world. I happen to think it doesn't make a lot of sense for us to borrow money from the Chinese to go give to another country for humanitarian aid. We ought to get the Chinese to take care of the people that are, that are and, and taking that borrowed money today. And, and finally, there's a portion of our foreign aid that, that allows us to carry out our, our activities in the world, such as what's happening in Pakistan, where we're, taking, we're supplying our troops in Afghanistan through Pakistan. But let me tell you, we're spending more in foreign aid than we ought to be spending. And, and Congressman Paul asked, is there a place we can cut the budget? Let me tell you where we cut the budget. Discretionary accounts we bring back to 2008 level. We get rid of Obamacare. Number three, we take Medicaid, turn it back to the states, grow it at only one to two percent per year. Number three, we cut, number four rather, we cut federal employment by at least 10 percent through attrition. And finally, we say to federal employees, you're not going to make more money than the people in the private sector who are paying for you. We link their compensation. Time. Congressman Paul. On, on foreign aid, that should be the easiest thing to cut. It's not authorized in the Constitution that we can take money from you and give it to particular countries around the world. To me, foreign aid is taking money from poor people in this country and giving it to rich people in poor countries, and it becomes weapons of war, essentially. No, well, no matter how well motivated it Congressman is. Congressman Paul, so would you often, cut aid to Israel? I would cut all foreign aid. I would treat everybody equally and fairly. And I don't think aid to Israel actually helps them. I think it teaches them to be dependent. We're on a bankruptcy court, of course, and, uh, and look at what's the result of all that foreign aid we gave to Egypt. I mean, their, their dictator that we pumped up, we spent all these tr billions of dollars, and now there's a more hostile regime in Egypt, and that's what's happening all around Israel. That foreign aid makes Israel dependent on us. It softens them for their own economy, and they should have their sovereignty back. They should be able um, to deal with their Congress neighbors should, at their own should will. Should we cut foreign aid to Israel? No, we should not be cutting foreign aid to Israel. Israel is our greatest ally. The biggest problem is the fact that the president of the... The biggest problem with this administration and foreign policy is that President Obama, as the first president since Israel declared her sovereignty, sovereignty, put daylight between the United States and Israel. That heavily contributed to the current hostilities that we see in the Middle East region. Cutting back on foreign aid is one thing. Being reimbursed by nations that we have liberated is another. We should look to Iraq and Libya to reimburse us for part of what we have done to liberate these nations. Nations. Now, I need to add something on this issue of negotiating for hostages. This is a very serious issue for any candidate to say that they would release the prisoners at Guantanamo in exchange for a hostage would be absolutely contrary to the historical nature of the United States and what we do in our policy. That's naive. We cannot do that. The United States has done well because we have an absolute policy. We don't negotiate. Herman Cain, I've got to give you 30 seconds because she was referring to basically saying you were naive or if, if that's what you were suggesting. No, I, I said that I believe in the philosophy of we don't negotiate with terrorists. 
Uh, I think I didn't say that I would never agree to letting uh, hostages in Guantanamo Bay go. No, that wasn't that wasn't the, the intent at all. But let me go back to this, if I could, very quickly in the time that I have left the question they ask about foreign aid. My approach is an extension of the Reagan approach, peace through strength, and which is peace through strength and clarity. If we clarify who our friends are, clarify who our enemies are, and stop giving money to our enemies, then we ought to continue to give money to our friends like Israel. You have 30 seconds, Congressman oh, Paul, yes. then I gotta go. Matter of fact, I don't want to make a statement, I want to ask a question. Are you all willing to condemn Ronald Reagan for changing weapons for hostages out of Iran? We all know that was done. But you know what? That's not. Uh, Iran was a sovereign country. It was not a terrorist organization. Number one. That's, oh, they that's, were our good friends. Back they're not then. our good friends. But they're, <laughs> yeah. they're they're a sovereign country, just like the the Palestinian Authority is not he, the good friends he, he, of Israel. He negotiated for hostages. Uh, there's there's a role. For, we negotiated with hostages with the Soviet Union. Now we've we've negotiated with hostages, of, uh, depending on the scale. But there's a difference between releasing terrorists from Guantanamo Bay in response to a terrorist they're demand. They're all suspect. Then, they're not terrorists. You haven't convicted them of anything. Then, then negotiating with other countries where we may have an interest, and that is certainly a proper role for the United States we to gotta do. we got to take a quick break. I, I do want to give Speaker Gingrich 30 seconds, and then... Uh, just, just very straightforward. Cliss and I did a film on Ronald Reagan. There's a very painful moment in the film when he looks in the camera and says, I didn't think we did this. I'm against doing it. I went back and looked. The truth is we did. It was an enormous mistake. And he thought the Iranian deal was a terrible mistake. We're going to take a short break. Uh, our debate, though, continues on the other side of the break. So stay tuned when we return. Which candidate has the best chance to beat Barack Obama? And should it matter in your vote? Stay with us.